We are living in an era where violent conflicts and civil war are prevalent, and poverty is rampant. It's crucial that we try to eradicate these problems, especially because they are not only linked to one another, but involve a whole host of other problems as well. It's vital to look at it as not merely a one-dimensional view, but we must also consider the underlying social, political, and economic issues and other situational vulnerabilities. Many institutions and countries believe that the problem of chronic poverty is simply about poverty and do not look to causal factors or linkages. In Sri Lanka, ethnicity is a major intervening factor between poverty and conflict, where poverty is not just the outcome of conflict, but helps shape the very conflict itself. For over 25 years, the Tamils and Sinhalese have been fighting one another within Sri Lanka. In a country that has food problems and a slow rate of development, it's not surprising that there's hostility among the groups as they fight for access to resources. The fact that the Sinhalese-dominated government creates policies that favor Sinhalese, combined with the view that Tamils are constantly taking food and job sources away from them, has created a lot of animosity. While civil war in Sri Lanka officially ended as of 2009, this doesn't mean that Sri Lanka has stopped experiencing developmental and peace problems. Conflict, while smaller in scale than before, is still a problem. Relying on international aid and donations is not enough, for any humanitarian aid will be undermined if it deals only superficially with the poverty problem and not the other challenges that engender violence and instability. Competition for resources, from food to education and employment, combined with the high amount of money that was lost in funding the civil war, has eroded the capability of the government to provide other much-needed services in health, food, and housing. So humanitarian assistance must help Sri Lanka in rebuilding the country after the war, not just try and feed more people. Because the civil war began as a result of ethnic animosity, more active forms of peace building are needed to deal with the concept of the ethnic other. While it's dangerous to deal only with poverty, on the other side of the spectrum, it's also dangerous to deal only with conflict. A lot of resources and efforts are only channeled towards stemming violence. Again, this isn't the best solution. When dealing only with directly quelling violent conflict, all the other aspects of life and protecting citizens aren't dealt with. In Sri Lanka, this is very much the case. Because the government and international organizations were so concerned with dealing with merely stopping the fighting among Tamils and Sinhalese, the provision of services was withdrawn from vital health, housing, and food sectors. Because so many people were displaced and couldn't afford the high prices of food, this ended up contributing to even more violence. The Tamils and Sinhalese communities are still fighting each other for access to food and jobs, fueling the feelings of resentment they have towards one another, intensifying resource problems, and increasing violence. So, how do we begin to solve this complicated problem? The best bet would be to simultaneously work towards conflict resolution with continued post-conflict programs that include not only dealing with poverty, but various underlying social inequities as well. If you deal only with conflict, thousands of people may still be hungry and homeless. And if you deal only with poverty, the undertones of violence will still exist. In Sri Lanka, various programs have recently been initiated to foster understanding and a sense of community among the Tamils and Sinhalese. In order to ensure peace will continue and civil war doesn't break out again, workshops have been created to try and reduce ethnic tensions. Marginalization of the Sinhalese and Tamils is also being dealt with through educational workshops and reconciliation programs. At the same time, humanitarian organizations are working to solve the problems of resource shortages by providing equal access to food and water. Thus, there's the need for conflict prevention and mediation to be combined with poverty alleviation programs, much of which comes from the continued assistance of humanitarian organizations. This is tricky, but there's been moderate success in Sri Lanka since the end of its civil war. The Sri Lankan government has also been using other tactics to push for development. They are promoting tourism, which has considerably boosted the country's economy, providing even more job opportunities to its citizens. This is perhaps most important, to acknowledge that dealing with poverty is not merely giving food and water resources, but also making sure that people 
will receive opportunities for education from how to take care of their health to agricultural practices. This is an overwhelming need for development solutions on multiple scales to look to not just global solutions, but to ensure local and regional policies are also being implemented. Again, this is the case in Sri Lanka, which demonstrates how important it is to pay attention to other social vulnerabilities, such as cultural norms and attitudes among the different warring ethnic groups. The goal is to create solutions and policies that will be sustainable, not to merely deal with poverty and conflict in the moment, and then inevitably have to deal with them again in the future. Development and peace in Sri Lanka is not yet 100% accomplished, but the country is making good progress of solving its problems of conflict and poverty.